So today we're going to have some fun. We are going to create a spring door hanger. That is what we're going to make this. The colors may be a little different, but we're going to have some fun with this. Here are the retro letters, the stamp. The unique part of these letters is that they're hollow on the inside of them. We're going to be using the quick set resin. All you do is you take equal parts of A and B. So it's super easy. You just get a little mixing cup and I'm only going to put a little in because we're not going to make a ton of letters. We're just going to make enough of the mixture to so I can show you how the letters are made. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little stick, popsicle stick, whatever you have, and just stir it. You'll notice that it instantly turns white. That means it's working. Now this is quick set. If I stir it too long, it's going to get hard on me and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to keep stirring and I stir for about a minute. Make sure it's a flat surface. You take your resin and you pour it into your letters. So that is how you do it. You mix your resin one to one, pour it in, quick set, it takes about 10 minutes and then you can pull it out. So here I have one ready for us to go. I wanna show you how this works. If you take them out before they are hard, it makes them easier to cut around them if you have any overpour and you probably will and that's okay but that's what scissors and exacto knives are for so I'm just going to kind of bend it and just kind of pull up you see that and they do stretch a little bit because it's not completely hard yet so I'm just pulling up a little at a time <clears throat> And there we have it. There is your letter. Now you'll notice I have a little bit of an extra part here and here of the resin where it spilled over the edge of the letter, which no problem. Scissors, or you can even use an X-Acto knife. You just simply cut and you get the extra parts off. So there you go, so you have your letters. Here is our round. I have already prepped it with the brown color. I like this color so and it the letters and the colors that I'm using it makes it pop. So you can paint it whatever color you want. You can stain it. It's your choice. This is just the colors that I like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a piece of painter's tape. So I'm just going to put it right about here. Um, let me see. Yeah, right there. And I'm just going to make sure my tape is secure. So if I wanted a really crisp line here, I would put some clear coat on here, but because I'm gonna be adding a piece of ribbon, it does not have to be perfect. So I'm just gonna use the tape and I'm not going to worry about adding the clear coat. Just using a regular old brush and some chalk paint. You can use whatever kind of paint you like. And you're just simply going to paint on another color just to give your door hanger some dimension. So if you see behind me, we have the brown and up there is the white. I probably should get it a little lower. Now door hangers are so popular. I think you could, you could buy them in a store, you can buy them on Etsy, you can buy them everywhere, but what's better than creating your own? What I did was we made resin letters Easter, but I want to be able to put happy on here. You can stamp whatever you want. Like for instance, if you don't want to do Easter, you can do spring, welcome. I'm sure all of you could come up with some ideas of what you could put on it. Uh, today what we're going to do is we are going to use the stamps, the typesetting. Let me show you the, the other side. So the typesetting font comes with uppercase comes with the numbers but it also comes with the lowercase which is a nice feature because not everything you want in uppercase sometimes you want the lowercase but this is a nice set because it gives you option of and you can mix and match if you want to be proper you can have a capital letter with your lowercase letters whatever you want to do how we do this is these are 
so helpful when you want to line up your letters to be straight. If you don't really care about your letters, you can just kind of stick them on, but I like my letters to be semi-straight, and these grids on the thin mounts really help. Now, the thin mounts come in a, a much bigger sheet. I just simply cut them down and use the different sizes for different projects because they also come with, there's curves, so if you want to add curves to your words, you can do that on some of the thin mounts. But this here, I'm just, I just want to use the grid to show that I'm lining my letters up correctly. So I'm using the lower case of the typesetting and I'm going to do happy. So here's the H. I'm going to line it up on this line right here. Push it down. And then the A goes next. Now, the thing about most of these, or I should say, I think all of them, they only come with one letter of each. So what you have to do is you have to create what's called like a placeholder. So it's H-A-P-P-Y. I don't want to just simply guess where it's going to go. I guess I could count one, two, three, but I, I, what I'd rather do is just pick it up and use a placeholder. So I kind of mark where the last letter ends and then I'm going to put it right there. So I essentially just created a little placeholder. And when we have the Y. Now what we're going to do is we are going to ink it. I'm going to be using the white and I'm also going to be using a brayer. Some people prefer to use the ink pad and to chalk it up and put the chalk on like, like this. Oops, let's see if we can pop that off. There we go. This is how some people ink theirs, just do this. I find, uh, um, I seem to get like more ink. I, I just like the brayer better. So I have just a piece of glass and then I just take, shake the ink, you make, make sure you wanna shake it. And put some down on the glass. I like the glass because the glass is um, flat. Here's my brayer. You tell which color I use a lot, the most, but, and it, sh it won't hurt. Oops, I probably should need a little bit more. It won't hurt my letters or my white ink because the black is already dry. All right, so then all I do is I take it and I'm just gonna roll, see how much darker and more ink you get with the brayer? That's why I prefer the brayer. I know some people really like the stamp pad and it's pure preference. Now, I did get a little bit of ink here, so I'm going to wipe that off just in case because I don't want it to get anywhere on my pro project. Now, basically, I have to make sure I leave enough space for my letters. So I have plenty of space to do here. I can center happy. I can put it off to the left of line, and that's the way I like to do it, so that's what I'm gonna do. I need to get this on here before my ink dries. So I'm just going to, so I'm gonna put it right So once I get it where I want, I, I'm going to firmly press on the outline of the letter. Trying not to shift. So there we have ha P. <laughs> so now this is how you go back and you do your P. I'm going to leave the A there so I know where. I need to line them up. So I'm gonna put the P here. I'm gonna give it a little bit more ink just to make sure it's even like the other letters. I'm going to line it up and lightly press. There we go. So just the letters wash up really well. All you do is you rinse them under some cold water and if you need to, you can rub them with the sponge and they, they clean up well. I'm just going to simply take my hot glue gun and I'm just going to run it right across my line. This is why I didn't need my line to be perfect. And I'm going to just put it here. Now I'm going to be careful because my glue gun is really hot and 
with burlap, the glue goes right through. So just be careful when you're putting it on. And do the edges. Once I get it around the other side, I'll just simply ow, cut, <laughs> cut the edge of the burlap off. Hold it for a second. So here we are so far. We are happy. All right, so now these are pretty shiny. What I've found is I just give it two coats of paint, making sure you get the edges because it is going to come off. It's going to pop off your door hanger. So you want to make sure that you get the edges. You might even want to paint the back. It just depends. So basically what you're going to do is you're just going to paint all your letters. Super easy. After I paint my letters, I kind of move them on the cardboard just because if you leave them where you painted, they sometimes stick and you don't want them to stick them up. Now, this is, these letters are kind of boring and they're flat. So we are going to, you can use the stamp pad with the dark ink or you can use some gilding wax. So you just simply take your stamp. And you want to be careful. You don't want to put too much on. You just kind of rub it around the edges. The problem is getting in to the center for this particular thing. I'm just going to go ahead and use a gilding wax just because it's easier because you just take your finger and you can get right into the middle. So all I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit of gilding wax. You can use any kind. You can, use, you can actually even use just wet paint and do this. I'm using black. It doesn't matter if it's thick or thin. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my mixing white because this is what I'm going to use to make the details on these letters. All I did for the white lines and the white dots was I took a little bit of the IOD mixing white, but it's white for you want to use it, but it's also good when you want to mix your colors. And then all I did was I just used the bottom of my paintbrush. You take your letter. I dip my paintbrush into the mixing white and then I just went one, two, three. Now I want my E to be a little bit different than the last one, so I'm going to put the dots in different spaces. Now I also ran a couple of lines and what I did was near the dots I just put a line next to it. So I just put, again, the tip of my paintbrush into the ink and then I just took it and went straight down and made a line. So now all you do is you take one of these, you just peel it off. So that side's sticky and that side still has the paper on it. So I'm going to put it, um, now some of them will be bigger than the area. So if I put them on the back of the E, it would show. So I'm going to go ahead, you can just cut them. So before I put these on, I want to show you one other trick that will help the edge pop. So I'm going to do that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my white stamper and I'm just going to drag it along the edges. Just to give it a little bit of character, dimension, layered look, whatever. Now we can put our letters on. So all you simply do is now you just peel the backing off. All right, last but not least, we need to finish our project with a bow. We're just gonna simply hot glue it on here 
and then I'm gonna hang it up so you can see our final project. I used a zip tie, so I'm just gonna cut off that extra. What's nice about it is it does have the wire in the ribbon, so you can kind of mold it to where you want it. I'm going to take my handy dandy glue gun, put a bunch down right here. So I'm just gonna count to 10 while that glues on there. To get it to be on your door, you can either take some ribbon behind here, staple it on, just make a loop. You can also put uh, little ringlets where you can hang, that you can hang on the back. There's several different ways you can hang it on here. I just basically wanted to show you what you can make. All right, you guys, have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining me.